<laughs> something about you know just oh, throwing a moving bait it seems like they really come out bad. come out and like fire on it just probably because it's oh there we go that's a pretty decent one that's bigger oh dude there's another one that came out there we go there what is that oh it's a little bass what is going on guys welcome back to another video so today i was inspired the other night i was like we need to do some more micro fishing because you guys seem like you really really enjoy those videos so that's what we're gonna do we're gonna run to academy i'm gonna try to keep it under 20 dollars. i want to get like a crankbait i love to get a little top water something small that i could catch you know like a bluegill or like a sunfish or something of that sort with but we're gonna run into academy see what all they got on the inside and try to get some little micro creek fishing lures and then go down to the creek we're gonna wade today we don't have the kayak with us we're gonna go walk through the creek a little bit see if we can't get on hopefully some big spotted bass because last couple of times we went down there we saw a couple of like two three four pound spotted bass so i think possibilities are endless for this when you buy little lures you catch pretty much anything and everything so stay tuned we're gonna run in here see what we can get into and hopefully buy some pretty cool lures all right guys eventually i want to get to the point where we can do well i mean we could do it today but maybe let's say this if this video gets 650 likes we will come back and we'll do like a live bait because i really just want to buy some like little worms and take them to the creek just see what we can catch we can catch a good mix of a little bit of everything all right so i think we're gonna probably vibe on this aisle right here and try to get some lures off of this one because it has like some panfish stuff but it's also a lot of terminal i feel like we probably need to be like an aisle over ah yeah this is it Dang, Academy be blasting their music. So we're gonna try to keep it under $20. So um, I don't wanna do a kit. I like to get some different things. Also, we just had some subscribers come up. Shout out to y'all. Uh, let's see, let's see. I haven't done a beetle spin yet. I feel like I should really get a beetle spin, but if I could find like a super, super small popper, that would be ideal for today. Cause I feel like that, I love top water first of all, and then just being able to catch fish on a popper, top water is just, top water is, it's always the move. Yeah. All right, I kind of like the way these look. We're gonna get these five bucks, sausage head, 1 16th ounce, kind of pre-rigged jig head. We're gonna get these and try these out. I think it's only right too if we get like a beetle spin because I've been talking about them, but I haven't got one yet. Or maybe we don't go with the beetle spin branded one. Maybe we go with one that kind of, you know, just has the little spinner to it. Like, oh yeah, something like that'll probably get mine. All right, so I think we got two lures here. I might drop this down to just a $10 budget just because I think those two we could probably kill on either one of those lures and there's not a whole bunch of variety for super small stuff so i'll probably have to like do this and do it online like try to find some stuff on amazon because i don't really see anything that's too different i mean we have rooster tails i was really kind of hoping they would have small crankbaits or something like super small that i could catch like a bluegill on you know like the little crawl crankbaits but we're gonna walk the other aisles because i might just be on the wrong aisle because this is definitely like panfish stuff right here but sausage heads and road runner so stay tuned we're gonna hopefully find some different stuff as well Ooh, i tell y'all academy is definitely my go-to like i'm not sponsored by academy or anything like that but just as far as like prices and selections everything in academy seems like it's a couple dollars cheaper like rage tails at bass pro would be eight dollars but here they're 6.49 the good old generals 5.99 here like if you want to if you have an academy close you know if you have to drive an hour and bass pros 15 minutes away i'm gonna spend the extra two three dollars but if you have an Academy clothes, if you haven't checked it out, I definitely recommend going to go shop a little bit at Academy. All right, here's the H2. All right, so we found the H2O Express stuff, but I don't see anything that's like super small. Like we can use, oh, this looks good. We could use stuff like that. Like these would probably get eight as well. But I want the ones that are like micro, like probably a little bit smaller than that. All right, so. We're gonna get our last lure and it's gonna be the Whopper Plopper 60. It's like a super, super small Whopper Plopper. It has two hooks on it. We're gonna get this and hopefully be able to hook up on some, I don't know, maybe a little bass. I don't think I fished top water in the creek. I might have. Yeah, we did that drift walker video and then pretty much put us at $20 because this thing is either $7.99 or $9.99. Let's go check because we have $10 worth of stuff off the other aisle. And then this is yeah, $9.99, so we'll keep it a $20 challenge. All right, so our only goal today is to catch a fish on each one of these lures. I'm super excited to throw that Chapo 60, or Whopper Plopper 60, excuse me. It's been a minute, I've been pretty big on the Chapo. It's gonna be cool to throw a Whopper Plopper today, try it out a little bit. We have mono on our rod, so that's like ideal for a small topwater bait with treble hooks on it. Like we should be in the money there. Yeah, I think we're good. Stay tuned, we're gonna go check out and take our stuff to the pond. We're gonna walk around the creek a little bit. I said pond, creek, creek, yeah. <laughs> 
All right, the more of these like budget challenges that I do, the better and better I get at spending money because I spent exactly $20.22 in there and just eyeballing. I guess I'm getting good at math, so I'll open up a LMJ tutoring math service if you, you or your child needs help with math problems at an eighth grade level or lower. Ooh, it's my first time down here. I think I came down last week, maybe. Whoa, that's a lot heavier than I expected it to be. It's my first time down here in a while and the water is lowest I've ever seen it for sure. Check this out. So this is our little first lure. It's like a little beetle spin, kinda, sorta. But hopefully we can get some bluegill on. I, I also bought, I brought the big case of stuff that I normally have from the first time I went micro fishing, just in case, like just in case. This water, well, I guess I normally cross right here. Oh, that tree that down is new. Huh. I was like, why am I in such deep water right here? It's never this deep, but because there's a new tree on the ground. All right, so I was trying to think of like, how do we want to do this? What's going to be our end goal? Like, when are we going to say like mission accomplished? And I think we're just going to try to catch a fish on every one of the lures. Like we have a moving bait, we have one that we can kind of slow down a little bit more, like we don't have to keep the blade engaged on the sausage lure that we have. And then the chopper, we got a Texas rig, or the chopper, we have a top water. So we kind of have all three water columns covered with the bait selection we got at Academy. But since like the past couple of times I've came out here, this little section right here doesn't have too, too much life in it but also you never know. Sometimes you'll make a cast where you don't think there's anything and then you'll draw one out. Ooh, this water does feel, maybe I'm just walking a little bit deeper than I normally do, but it feels like it's a lot deeper down here. And the crazy thing is, I don't think we've had any rain unless we've had like some little pop-up showers at night. Ooh, I love this white lure because you can see it so well. You can see if you have any followers or anything. All right, this is gonna be the cast. That's our first bite right there, I'm calling it. It's like we need a little bit faster gear ratio reel to keep this thing off the bottom because it's like, working on the bottom i'm not sure if our blade is spinning how it needs to be oh there we go first one. Oh, i got off i think that's how i'm gonna have to do it i'm gonna have to just hold my rod tip up and almost burn it in because it's like there's a lot of fish over here but i think this lure is kind of heavy and just the ratio and the reel is kind of slow oh yeah we got a couple followers on that cast yeah seems like we're getting a lot better response when we're doing this too just kind of fast retrieve with it all right, this cast, we should get bit for real this time. Look at that, yeah, I already got one on it. It's crazy how many fish you draw out from cover with something like this. Like, got him. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, dude. I forgot he wasn't a bass. Uh, I saw him eat it. Let's go. There's our first one, a little small, like, spinner bait. I'm sorry, man. I just got a little excited. I saw them eat it and the other ones were eating it, but like, I just didn't want to do that to them. Probably wouldn't have taken all that, but we're learning. <laughs> awesome, awesome, awesome. There we go. There's another one. <laughs> what is that? Little bluegill? Yeah. Green sunfish. All right. We're going to fish the rest of this pocket with this one since we already got two on it. See how many we can catch. And then we are going to switch over. I think it gets a little bit deep past this, so we might switch over to the Chapo. Oh, oh, that was a good little bite. I feel like a pretty decent bluegill. Okay, we're just going to stick with this one for the rest of this pocket. I always forget about this log right here. It's a log that you can almost cast perfectly down the side of right here. There's always a couple bass that, oh, there we go. Is that, looks like a little bass, looks long. Yeah, a little spot. Look at that. <laughs> See, this is why I like micro fishing because these are so much fun. See, I wonder this guy's big enough to eat that little choppa. Oh, look at his tail. I wonder what happened to him there. Maybe something was after him. I mean, look how thick this guy is. Like, small fish, but. Just good and healthy. You can tell that all of them are gonna be, you know, if they live to make it to be three, four years old, they're gonna be three, four pounders for sure. Probably might even be bigger than that. What? Well, maybe two. We might've spooked a lot of them because that's one thing about this creek that I found. It seems like whenever you catch one out of a certain spot, you kind of spook the rest of them. 
I feel like it's hard to, you know, get a repeat cast in the same area and hook up again. And I wonder if there's peacock. I w well, first, I wonder if there's creeks like this in South Florida. Like, if any of y'all know the answer to that, please let me know in the comments. And then are there, like, peacock bass? Because imagine going to South Florida and, like, peacock bass. Well, first of all, you probably wouldn't wade through a creek like this in South Florida just because of snakes and everything. But if anybody has maybe you could do it on a kayak or but like snakes and alligators and everything yeah i don't know how smart that would be yeah if there are like i guess the creeks there are more canal than you probably don't wade through a canal but anyway if there are creeks like this in like south florida area and if you've ever done anything like this in one of those creeks maybe that's known for only one alligator attack a year instead of like 15 to 20. <laughs> or maybe the alligators are just lazy yeah I don't know if I'm getting in the water down in South Florida because I think there's probably a lot more, you know, like microorganisms too that you probably have to watch out for down there. But yeah, I really like this little blade on this bit. I think that attracts a lot of bites. And I kind of tried to wait until the sun got up a little bit because it's two, three o'clock right now. So I wanted to wait for the sun to get up. Just in theory, I was thinking, you know, the higher the sun is, the more flash and vibration you'll be able to give off. But also this water's gin clear and these fish are like super aggressive. So it seems like anything that they see, they're like, oh, I bet I could eat that. So next we're gonna go to this. And then once ever we get to the, once ever, whenever we get to the big open pool towards the end, we're gonna tie on that chopo. And that's last time we were over there, we caught a couple, excuse me, really big spotted bass. And hopefully we'll be able to repeat that over there with the little chopo 60 whopper plopper 60 y'all are gonna have to give me a break on that i'm probably gonna call it the chopo about 80 more times i say this every micro fishing video but guys i'm so happy that i like bought this combo and tried this really i'm happy that john came down and he kind of opened my eyes to it because watching him just catch fish left and right i'm like i need to try that so really happy that he came down and like kind of you know inspired me to do this a little bit just because this is a lot of fun one and then these are always lures that i go into like walmart bass pro academy and like see people shopping for them like huh you want to go catch bluegill huh? how easy must that be but like although this is fairly easy fishing it's just so much fun because you just never know like it's a good way to catch bass like the first time we took them out we caught a whole bunch of bass and like really 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 good bass too so like it's just one of those things, you know, next time that I go to a pond that just seems like it's overfished, but you just can't figure out how to get the fish to bite. I think this is one of those things that you definitely want a micro fishing combo in your arsenal. Like, shoot, even for like fishing a tournament, sometimes I kind of want to take this and go fish a tournament, like only fish this up shallow. I'm not sure how well it would do on a big lake, but I feel like you could, I mean, you could have a potential to win. Everything in life is 50-50. I might do that micro fishing tournament. <laughs> only throwing my micro rod in like a real bass tournament. Or like fishing open with only my micro fishing rod. Oh, dude, already. First cast with that. First cast with the sausage. What is that? Oh, it's a little spot. <laughs> you wanted some of that sausage, man. I don't know. I need to stop saying that. <laughs> oh, I was not expecting that that early. And I mean, we literally casted by like nothing. There's a tree in like some deep water right there, but. You no, know, never really would expect to catch something out of that. Especially since, I guess, the action is the tail of this thing. I haven't even seen how it looks under the water. But look at that. First fish. <laughs> oh, yeah. It does have a lot more motion than you'd think it would. I think fishing on the bottom would probably just be asking to get it hung up. Really. All right, we're going to try it. We're going to try to get a... Yeah. I feel like the fish in here probably prefer for their bait to kind of be moving so they feel like they found it and caught it themselves. I have fished a Ned Rig quite a bit in here and they eat a Ned Rig pretty good, but it's something about, you know, just throwing a moving bait, it seems like they really come out come out and like fire on it just probably because it's, oh, there we go. That's a pretty decent one. That's bigger. Oh, dude, there's another one that came out. We're gonna spot lock in this spot right here. So you know, we've been spending a lot of time on the kayak. <laughs> We're gonna spot lock right here and we are going, hey, 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 that's not a bad one. Like this fish isn't that big. He's not a pound, but like, he's good size. Thank you. That's what I was trying to get him to do. I meant to do that. Dude, we might find a little bass hack right here. It's crazy when that first bass ate another one shot out from under there and tried to eat it. That's the thing. It's like, you just never know how many bass are in an area just because you, oh, there we go. Oh, that's like a perfect cast. Cause you have this water shooting through right here. And then the bass are like, it's still where the structure is. So like the bass will kind of sit there and just wait on bait 
like this to come through so they can ambush it and like it's a pretty this is like as natural as it gets right here we got bit again right there now this is almost the same thing with like bass fishing in a pond you know like maybe not with running water but just say like this is a grass line like and it comes to a point the bass will sit like on the back side of the point just waiting on stuff to funnel through you see like you just probably let it flow down in there and one will come out and eat it that dang stick wasn't right there we'd probably be at about four or five fish by now let it flow back in there I have my bell open so it'll never gonna swim it out hey oh wow <laughs> We might have been hung up. I don't know. It kind of felt like it got eight for a second there. But I don't know. We're going to try it one more time. Just open our bell and kind of pop it a couple times so it'll get up in the water column and we'll get kind of sucked back there. All right, let's try again. Hey, there it is. Oh, dude, that was a bite for sure that time. That was definitely a fish. Hey, there we go. There's, what is that? Oh, it's a little bass. He must have been stuck in a rock or something because he got stuck for a second. I was like, yeah, man, this thing is like a little bass hack. We've caught so many. Look how fat that bass is. I mean, he's not big, but like, you can't tell me they're missing meals in here. It's probably why they're so aggressive because everything they see, they're like, oh, I can probably eat that. Like, I don't think I've caught one that's been unhealthy in here yet. Cool, and we caught that one right off the edge, so we can probably catch two or three more. Like, catch one out of this pocket and then catch another one over there. See, so guys, this is just like an unlimited bass hat. Like, however many you want to catch. Oh, there we go. Oh, I saw one come out and eat that. And that was definitely a better one. Look, there we go. <laughs> Look at that little, what is that? I don't know. I don't know if I've caught one of those before. Oh yeah, I, mm, I don't know. That looks like a hybrid or something. Mm. Hey, hey, all right. Oh my gosh, this is so much fun. Just going ham on these little fish. Oh, that's a pretty decent bass. Let's see if we can catch him. Oh, if he eat, oh he's looking at it. Swam off. He probably saw us. There's so much bait in this little pocket right here. Like, it's crazy that we're still catching fish with all the bait that I'm seeing. Hey, there we go. Ah, oh, don't swim all throughout all the fish and let them know I hooked you, dude. <laughs> That's the biggest one of the day, little bluegill. Hey, oh, my bad, man. All right, let's see if they'll still eat it after that. See if my theory I've been saying is right or not just seems like after they do something like that if they kind of swim throughout the whole school and you don't go ahead and get them out just seems like it's kind of slow from there all right so now we're gonna switch it up try to save the one i was most excited to throw for last caught them on the little sausage we're gonna add all these baits to our tackle box and y'all will probably see a lot more of these especially as we kind of go and fish in more different areas Throw that down in there. So now we have the Whopper Plopper 60. I wonder how this thing's gonna work. All right. We got our Chopo rigged up. Whopper Plopper, excuse me. Oh yeah, and then it's like kind of good and light too, but we'll probably be able to sling it pretty far. This thing looks so sick. This thing is going to get destroyed by a spot. It's so different too. I think that's probably one of the keys with micro fishing. Yeah, they're smaller lures. Yeah, they're probably a little bit better at attracting fish, but also they're just different. Like, you know, a lot of people probably come down here to throw micro lures, but also at the same time, like, a lot of these fish probably haven't seen, you know, a popper this small. They see like a bass size popper. Oh, look, 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 look. See? Oh, one came out. One came out all the way from over there to come eat it. Biggest bass of the day. And But not a crazy big one, but just... I mean, it drew it probably 20, 30 feet. That was cool. Then where I was standing, I, like, saw him shoot out and swim over to it. 
All right, this cast right here, we're gonna get bit on, I'm calling it. Oh, if we don't put it in the tree. Oh yeah, that's money. Definitely having to keep my rod tip up a little bit higher because we have mono on, but. It's kinda, it's kinda getting like stuck on the water surface on top of the water and not really moving how I want it to. We get over there to like where that shade is. That's probably gonna be money. Hey. All right, last time I was over here, I just kind of walked parallel to this tree right here and I just stood and made a whole bunch of casts and got silent and we ended up hooking on a pretty good one. I wonder if we need to do like a fast retrieve because it's not really putting off like a whole bunch of water. Hey, there we go, first one. First one. Oh, got off, no. Hey, that was our first one. Feel like a pretty decent sized bass. Almost seems like I need to be fishing this upstream. Like there's not a lot of current right here, but it's like the little bit of current there is, it's kind of hurting the prop to spin. It's not spinning as well as I think it would, you know, fishing back the opposite way with it. Right there on the other side of that tree. There's just not a lot of places I can cast to like switch it up. Look, there we go. I didn't even see it. Oh, don't go in the tree. <laughs> Probably need to tighten the drag up a little bit. I have a bad experience with the bass in a tree like this. Okay, got him. Is there anywhere we can take him like up on land? Oh, he has those triple hooks. <laughs> Look at that one. That's the best one of the day on that little chapo. Chill. That was scary. I have, bad, I have a very, very traumatic experience with a bass getting stuck on a tree and just losing it. Really big spotted bass in a tournament. It happened a couple weeks ago, or actually like last weekend, weekend before last maybe. So when he got down in that tree, I was like, oh no, here we go again. Cool, that's the biggest one of the day on that chopo. Cool, we're probably gonna stick with this. We'll fish it down into the shadow and then I don't know if we're going to turn around or if we should keep going because this is really like the deepest pocket over here or where it's like consistently deep where we can get a whole bunch of really good casting with it. So I'm not sure we'll figure it out whenever we get over here and try to catch a couple. Also, like this is kind of the last super productive spot of this creek. But hey, we have successfully completed our challenge. We have caught one fish on every single one of our top water lures today oh there we go got another one. Oh, got off that was such a cool eat then that one we caught before that one too was really cool because like we saw him come up and try to eat it it's like a little bluegill it's so crazy how close they're getting to me like there's another little bass right there trying to eat it something about this chapo it's like they don't care they just want it chapo whopper plopper there we go again I'm just getting another one in there. Yeah, I can't even see what that is. It looks like a pretty good bass though. Like it's almost one of those, it's one of those blows where they just kind of come up and suck it in. They don't really come up and hit it really hard. Not all the time, but sometimes that can be a fairly decent sized fish. I don't want to promise it today, but eventually we're going to find a good one in this creek. Like one that's like maybe four or five pounder large mouth or even maybe even a spot or even a spot oh that's a good catch all right come on now let me get it all right guys the water is like overall it is a little bit shallower and there's not really too much more space that we can fish the chopo so we're going to turn around fish back towards the truck but we're going to go like around the little there's a bend over there that we've never caught any fish out of but it always looks super promising and we've only really fished that way on the kayak and normally I'm getting hung up in trees and whatnot when I'm over there. So we're going to go over there and throw this around that little riprap bank over there and try it out a little bit. There we go. Hey, that's a good one. It's a bigger one. Look at that. Dude, all these bass in here are so big. That's why I wanted to switch from that chopo because I feel like we were missing out on some of those little small like places you got to be a little accurate to get into. Like top water's fun, but there's nothing like, oh, going into the water column. That was a pretty good one. Dude, I don't know if like, maybe I catch so many bass that like my thumb gets, I don't know, my thumb gets used to the 
sandpaper, but it's like some of these bass that I've been catching don't have any teeth. Is that a fish? No. Ah. Oh. <laughs> It'll come off, maybe. Oh, got it. Cool. I'll take it. Bag, I'm racing the clock, look at them flock, watching them flock. Used to see this on my sleep when I ain't had shit but my thoughts in the car. I really was lost. Now I'm public with the soundscapes.